I had a request uh, a while ago about a, what's known as a long pico cast off. So I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm doing it on a chunky machine so it's easier to see. Um, and I've just knitted a few rows and this can be either the end of your knitting or you've picked up from the bottom to put this on the bottom of something. So I'm just going to have to move that slightly because I'll knock it. Uh, so basically to do a long pico bind off, cast off as it's called, you need to cast on some stitches. Um, and whatever number of stitches you cast on for the length, that's uh, double that is what you cast off. It'll make sense in a minute. I'm going to do cast on five stitches and I'm going to two, four, five, and I'm going to do um, a double E wrap cast on. Um, so I'm bringing that extra one out. You'll see why it's a double in a minute because um, it, uh, it just makes a bit of a firmer edge. Right, so I have cast on uh, five extra stitches because that, that one was already there. Now you've got to cast them off, which can be easier said than done. I'm going to do it behind the gate pegs so it doesn't uh, squiffle up. The first thing to do is drop the stitch, of course. Always have your way back in B to do this. So that's one stitch. Quite difficult doing this with the video camera in the way. Right, those are the five oh, stitches that I cast on. I've now cast them off. And I now need to cast off five stitches um, of the original. So that's two, four, so that'll be on the 11 there. So we just keep um, casting off. Now this is going to look very exaggerated because of the size of it. Right, so that, whoops. Do what I do and keep dropping the stitches. And it doesn't want to uh, not my day. Right. Try that one again. I am definitely not having a good day. So more haste, less speed. Yay. Right. And then when you take this off, as I say, it's making a very long one. 
you have a long pico bind off. Um, just let me move that along and I'll do another one. Um, so we now want to cast on another five, two, four, five, and I'm bringing this one out because I want to do a double E wrap. And then cast those off. And I'm not going to faff about because I'm not paying attention here as well as I should. So I keep dropping them. You can put beads on this um, one that you've just, uh, the first one you do. So you would have a bead dangling. the original and then another five you can begin to see because I didn't um, cast that one off properly but you start getting these long bits I'll cast off the rest and then you can uh, see what it looks like when it's off the machine casting off behind the gate pegs on the chunky it's not easy because the um, gate pegs are a pain um, as you can see this will obviously need um, pinning and then steaming to uh, keep the bits flat. Um, I did put a bead on the end of one just to show you what you can do. Um, I'm going to go and pin that out and then you can actually see it a bit better what it actually looks like. That's pinned out before I'd uh, sort of steam it to get them flat but it makes um, a different sort of edging on the bottom of a shawl especially if you put um, some beads I mean, I've got these glass headed pins in at the moment, but if you imagine that actually those were beads on the, the bottom, it would give it a bit of weight and uh, add a bit more interest. And maybe not in bright pink like this, but um, uh, yeah, it's just another way of, of casting off to add a bit of decoration. <laughs> 